Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another sister's review. All right, y'all, this episode was, <laughs> I was chewing my gum on this one. You know, I feel like it was good, but y'all, Tyler Perry, please, Tyler Perry, listen to me. Listen to all of us. Please stop putting these unnecessary, ugly, terribly applied wigs on your actors. Why did the private investigator need to have this terrible ass helmet fade where you can see the glue? And why do we need that? Why couldn't she have whatever her hair is under that wig? Why? Why? It was not vital to the character for her to have a fade. It doesn't matter that she's a lesbian. She did not need a fade. I, I cannot. Okay. So the wife and the PI come into Andy's office. Okay. And the wife is upset. She says that Andy is the lowest type of. Okay. You know, because it's the first little minute of the video. So <laughs> y'all know what I'm saying. Okay. She the lowest of the low. She knew he was married. Okay. I will have you fired. I will have you disbarred. Okay. And then I have friends in very high places in media okay i will have you drugged through the media andy says well that's your right i was like good reply good reply but you know what there was way too much back and forth telling andy to sit down i was like see what i'm talking about tyler perry stop that why do we need that much dialogue in order to get andy to sit the hell down for a meeting she had already agreed to Help me, Jesus. Oh, my God. The P.I. wants Andy and the wife to work together because she believes the real culprit is Gary. The only problem with this is the wife does not see it for Andy at all. She's pissed because she came in here and she just told you everything. She put her heart out on the table for Andy to find out that Andy is the woman that is knowingly sleeping with her husband. Yeah, no. Why would you expect the wife to see it for Andy at all? I would have drugged Andy's ass as well. Sitting there with the puppy dog look on your face. Ho! Andy asks what she gets out of this deal where she works with the wife. And the private investigator says that she'll sign an affidavit saying that Andy recused herself as soon as the wife came into the law office. And I said, this is what the law office get. Where's that damn boss that made her say she would represent this man wife where's that person at because he's the one that should be really liable for this because she told him and she said she didn't want to defend this lady because she was the other woman and it was a conflict of interest and you said she had to do it like no other lawyer in your office was good enough for these divorce proceedings get out of my face with this where's he the wife wants all the information. She doesn't have any specific questions, but she just wants Andy to talk. Just tell me how y'all met. And Andy slowly tells this story about how he reached for something that she was trying to get one day when she was in the grocery store looking ragged and rugged. She promised him that she was normally cuter. And he said that she was beautiful, even though she looked a hot ass mess. And then two weeks later, when she had ran out of the tea that she comes to this grocery store for, she came dressed to the nines. And he was there again as if he worked at the grocery store. At this point, the story between Andy and the wife starts to match, meaning the wife already knew what Andy was going to say at this point because he had done the same thing to her. Oh, you, you're, you're so beautiful and oh, my businesses and my philanthropy and blah, 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 telling all of the women the same story. The wife says at the end of the day, the difference is he was married when he was having that conversation with you. Andy says, well, he told me that he was going to get a divorce and he wasn't happy with you anymore. He also said that you got an early hysterectomy and he felt lonely around you, but I, I made him feel loved. That's what he told me. Then the wife pulls out an earring that she found in her bed. Andy says that the earring is not hers and that she's never even been to their home. Okay, now the wife don't look like she believes it, but the private eye was like, you know, <laughs> okay, fine. The wife stands up and wishes Andy all the misery and pain that her ratchet, terrible life can endure. She hates her guts and she wishes her hell. And then she storms out. And I was just like, I hope you have the same energy for your husband. Just saying. Karen and her terrible wig. Okay, the hair is good, but the wig is bad. It's just too much puff in the back. Never mind. She's waking up to breakfast in bed made by Zach. Okay, they look like they happy again. Okay, it's just been one night, but he must have rag tag tag that ass. <laughs> okay, gave you what you needed. Gave you what you needed. But he can't cook. 
So Karen is trying to rush off to work so she won't have to eat his nasty food. And she tells him that she got to go and make sure these bills get paid. And she was like, it's no shade to you. I'm not trying to, you know, say anything about you. But, you know, I got to go and make this money. Then Andy shows up. Zach is trying to tell her how he's changed. But she doesn't care. She's there to talk about the wife confronting her and calling her a low-down, dirty skank. Scut bucket. Slug. Hell. Once she tells Karen about how the wife plans to get her fired and disbarred, <laughs> she seems a little bit lighter. I was like, are you in a better mood now, even though the circumstances have not changed? What's happening here? Tyler, Tyler, explain. Why is she now lackadaisically happy? Like, oh, everything's okay, even though I'm about to get fired and disbarred and I spent all this money in college trying to get a law degree and now it's going to be taken from me. Snitch. Tyler. Karen goes into the bathroom to get herself together after Andy leaves and finds that Zach has taped three of his airport checks onto the glass, onto the mirror. And it's so sweet and it's so nice. And she starts to tally them up so she can see how much of his little check can pay some of their bills. Sabrina goes to the airport to ask Danny her opinion about Calvin and Dildo Gate. The fact that we're still talking about this, oh my God. Danny says that since Karen and Zach are back together, Sabrina should ask her to see if Zach minds a little ass plate. Like to ask him if he wants a dildo up his behind or if he wants a finger up there. Something along those lines because Zach is straight. So if Zach is okay with it, then that must mean that Calvin is, isn't bisexual or gay. <laughs> this is stupid. This is really stupid. I mean, what? What? Karen calls to thank Danny for sending her man back to her. And she tells her that they need to meet up at Andy's that night for Sister Circle because she need them. Then she tells Danny about Zach giving her all his checks. And she was like, oh yeah, won't you give me some of my prorated rent out of that? Karen was like, girl, he was only there for a few days, not even a whole week. Psh tosh. I'm like, child, if you was anywhere else, you would have had to pay $90, $90 a day. Get out of here with that. Run me my money or run me my pay. Shout out to Apple Watts. Sabrina and Karen talk while Sabrina's in the car leaving the airport. And Sabrina keeps deflecting because she doesn't really want to ask Karen about this whole booty thing. But... She's going to be tempted to do it anyway. Karen talks a little bit about how happy she is to be back with Zach. And then she tells Sabrina to make sure she's at Andy's house for Sister Circle that evening after work. And then Sabrina finally asks Karen if she will see if Zach likes ass play. To which Karen responds, I already know, girl. We've been together a while now. And every time I even reach to touch his butt, he's pushing my hands down. Oh, I'm getting turned on just thinking about it. Oh, the way he pushed me down on the bed now. <laughs> I'm just like, girl, pull it together, okay? I'm an ass grabber myself, just saying. But you know, not in, but you know, I love to grab. Grab, grab. Too much information? Sorry. Shit, now I'm getting turned on. <laughs> Karen, just like the rest of us, wants to understand why we still having this conversation about Calvin. And Sabrina says it's because his sex is so good. His sex is so good and it's all about her. And Karen is like, well, what about the part with him sticking a dildo in his butt? How about that part? That wasn't for her. But now he wants an even bigger dildo. I said, well, he need to buy it. Zach shows up to Danny's counter at the airport to ask her to loan him some money so he can take Karen out on a date. And she actually gives him the money. I'm like, is this a sister-brother relationship? A mother-son relationship? What is going on with this relationship? First of all, you just take three of your checks on a mirror. You could have take two of your checks on a mirror and took the third one to, to, to use to take her out somewhere. Instead of going asking Danny for money. And the fact that Danny actually gave the money, I'm just like, what's happening here? Why? Like, I, look... I'm a giver, don't get me wrong. But Danny ain't even got no money like that to be giving Zach money so he can take Karen out on a date. Like what? You went from being a trash friend to a friend that seems to be way too invested just like that. I don't know what's going on. I'll tell you one thing, Danny sure do look sad that Zach don't want her. But you know, I ain't one to gossip so you ain't heard that from me. 
Then some fine ass white boy comes up to her counter trying to get her phone number. But for some reason, he couldn't vocalize that. This was another moment where I was like, what the shit is happening in this scene? The writing, the writing, the writing. Like, why was this scene this difficult to go through? And Danny was like, can you just say it? It's like, you should have gave the man a stutter if he was going to sit up here and talk, but not talk. He was asking her out, asking for her phone number. And she kept asking why. I was so annoyed by the dialogue in this scene. Ultimately, she ends up getting his phone number and saying that she will call him and he's new in town, even though he late for his flight. I'm like, how you late for your flight, but you new in town and want her to show you around? Uh, what? Never mind. Moving along. So Zach is ignoring phone calls from this girl named Helena who works at the airport. Obviously somebody he smashed and passed on. Okay, you know, smashed and passed along. Well, guess what? Sis then turned up and she pregnant. It. She pregnant it and she think it's Zach, baby. And Zach is like, girl, get away from me because she's trying to hug him and all of that. Like, we could talk about this in private later. Not at my job, Helena. But, you know, she wasn't really trying to hear that. Then Danny comes over like what's going on here and Helena girl is like who is this I don't like her attitude Danny is like what the hell is going on here and she was like I'm pregnant and Danny was like damn Zach you can't catch a break <laughs> I said it's not funny but it is it's so sad you should wear a condom if you gonna sleep with a sleaze or if you are one she gives him back the key to her place because he's apparently going to need it later on when he tells Karen what's going on. So y'all, the private eye shows up to Andy's house talking about the wife is downstairs in a car and wants to come up and see her apartment so she can get a full view about what happened. I said, now bitch, what? What do you need to see my apartment for? Why do you need to visualize me having sex with your husband in order to understand what has happened? Why? So you can come after my neck even harder? Hell no. I would have told a private eye in her wig to get the hell out of my apartment and tell that bitch go get some therapy. But the PI says that they are solid together and she knows all about Andy and Andy is in the quitter. And Andy is like, girl, you don't know me. She was like, I know a lot about you when she runs off Andy's school and stats and where she lived and where she worked before nine and all of that. And Andy was like, well, if you know me, you should know I'm about to tell you to kiss my ass. And it's like, uh, actually, that does not go along with your personality traits at all. But OK, Andy, this just gives the little PI opportunity to let us know that this terrible wig and blazer means that. That, eh, you know she like girls because she was like it would be my pleasure under different circumstances child i thought they was gonna start making out and start bumping cooch i would have been excited but lost i would have been like what in the porno is going on here then there's a knock at the door and it's gary y'all it's gary i said oh <laughs> what are you doing here y'all did the wife see him come in from downstairs Anyway, she tells the P.I. to go downstairs and get the package out of the car, which I'm sure means go get his wife and bring her ass back up here. So then Andy burst into tears. Yeah, I'm tired of you. Look at these pictures. Look at this. What is going on? You know, I was just like, I'm going to need for her to have some type of in-between. Like, her acting. It just goes from one extreme to, to, you know, another. Like, I'm all aloof and calm, and then I'm losing my shit in two seconds. I, I need something in between that. You know, is it just me? Never mind. Then the wife comes in, okay? Andy says that, you know what? You're going to give her everything. You're going to give her the house, the car, everything. And then you're going to pay her $50,000 a month. Do you understand me? He says, yeah, I'll do it as long as I can have you. Andy, I love you. I want to be with you. I'll give her whatever she wants. I said, now how the hell did this flip on us like this, okay? This this ended up flipping on us completely to which now it seems like the wife is crazy and he really is in love with Andy and he really is a good guy, which is bullshit to me. What about all the other women that were in those pictures, okay? Because Andy was like, what about this picture of this woman? And it turns out that it was the wife's sister so it was his sister-in-law that he was at the airport with that was another chick that he was supposedly having lunch with every day what happened to her what happened to the earring that was in the bed what happened to him asking her about trying to keep all his money like why are y'all giving us all of these different personality traits in people are they grimy or not tyler perry what the fuck this also shows how trash the pi is that she doesn't even know her client's sister when she sees her <laughs> 
Gary says that Jasmine and her family are crazy. He has tried. They have gone through therapy and he, there's nothing else he can do. This is just over for him. He's trying to leave out the apartment, but the wife blocks the door. And he's like, look, tell her to move before I move her. And then I'm going to be in the wrong. And the PI is like, Jasmine, please get the hell from in front of the door and let the man leave. So he does. Now the wife is even more mad than she was before because now she realizes that he's actually choosing another woman over her. He's not just out here sleeping with everybody and trying to get over on everybody. Oh no, he's in love with Andy. He wants to be with Andy. He's willing to give up all his money for Andy. So now the wife is out for blood, y'all. And in the last scene of Sisters, I don't know why we had to have two dead people scenes, one on the Oval and one on Sisters. The one on o the Oval was terrible. When he pulled that fake head up and the blood was just eating out, I said, this is the fakest shit I've ever seen. Y'all wrong for that, okay? Y'all are wrong for that, okay? But then we pop over to this scene with Karen. Uh, Karen gets back to her hair salon and one of the girls in the hair salon is like, girl, you know you need this money and you late. This lady been sitting in your chair waiting for you. And when she gets to her chair and sees the lady sitting in the chair, it's Erin's wife or ex-wife. Okay, y'all know the crazy white bitch that keep popping up everywhere. And she's like, you know, Erin really likes you. And, you know, he talks about you or whatever the hell she was saying. She had that crazy look in her eyes like she was about to kill herself. I already knew what was going to happen. As soon as I saw her talking to Karen... Karen was like, I do not deal with preachers. I don't want your man. I'm not with him. I don't do that. Like, I'm back on my old dick. Get out of here with this, okay? Please leave. The lady turns around, reaches inside her purse, pulls out a gun, puts it in her mouth, and blows her head off right in front of Karen. And the blood and the brain fragments get all on Karen's forehead and then on her wig and shit. And I was just like... Good, I'm glad she gone. She worked on my nerves. You stalking somebody for no reason. Go stalk that man. The hell is you over here in my business for? Now, in real life, y'all, of course, it would be extremely sad. Like, why would a woman drive herself that far? If you can go and jump on some different dick during your marriage, explain to me why you can't go jump on some different dick after your marriage. You know what I'm saying? You gonna kill yourself for this shit, bitch? Girl. <laughs> y'all, I cannot with Tyler Perry. I cannot. I cannot. But I love I love sisters. I just really wish he would bring some sisters in to help him write sisters on BT. Okay? Please do us that favor. And uh, where's my second season of Bigger and the First Wives Club? Because those are the two shows that are really popping on BT. Like, they may have some good stuff going on, but those are my two top favorite shows that they've come out with recently. For real. You know what I'm saying? But anyway... Y'all, that was Sisters <laughs> on BT. <laughs> Just as crazy and fugazi as anybody ever seen in their life. Child, I gotta go. I love y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed. I'll see y'all in the next one.